happy to have uh, I guess another guest speaker today for the quarantine talks. Uh, Sedan Tang is the chief engineer of at PinCap, working on TyDB Ty and TyKB. He's here also to talk today about the the testing infrastructure or framework they built to test TyDB called Chaos Mesh. Um, Probably what Sedan is most famous for, and he feel free to disagree, is that he is the author of LettuceDB, which is one of the hottest Redis clones on the internet now. Is, is that a fair assessment, Sedan? Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, before I turn it over to Sedan to begin with the talk, again, if you guys have a question, by all means interrupt, um, and then say who you are, where you're coming from, and then ask your question. And then Sadan is uh, calling in today from China, so it is 4 a.m. where he's at. So uh, if the internet cuts out, we'll, we'll, we'll do the best we can. Okay? All right, Sadan, the floor is yours. Go for it. Let's begin. For it. And thank, you, thank you very much. I'm glad to see you here. And thanks, Andy, for giving me the chance to talk about how we use Chaos Mesh to test a cloud native database here. And today is, this my, uh, today is my talk, Testing Cloud Native Database with Chaos Mesh. And, of, okay, I need a few. And before this talk, I maybe uh, let me introduce myself briefly. And my name is Liu, uh, Satan Tang, and you can all call me Liu. Liu. And I'm the chief engineer at the PinCap, and uh, at Andy said, and the maintainer of TyDB, TyKip. Uh, TyDB is a cloud native database, and of course, a distributed key value, TyKB, and of course, Chaos Mesh, Go Mesh, and LetsDB, etc. And I'm also a Chaos Engineering advocate. And here's today's agenda. At first, I will introduce something about TyDB, and I will use TyDB, for example, to show you how we use Chaos Mesh to test a cloud native database. And of course, I will tell you some of our painful uncle experiments with TyDB, then to show you that why the chaos engineering is so important in the distributed world. Uh, of course, I will show you why you need chaos mesh if you want to use chaos engineering in your system. And of course, I will start uh, tell you how to start a chaos experiment with chaos mesh. And in the end, of course, I will talk about some future plan with Chaos Mesh, and if you have interest and want to contribute to us. Okay, let's begin. The first is Hello TidyB. Uh, uh, what's TidyB? And through uh, maybe, I think that TidyB is uh, maybe Lab is the famous uh, distributed transactional database uh, widely used in the world now. And you can see that now it has more than 1,000 production users, and uh, the GitHub star is more than two, uh, 24,000. And uh, the TidyB support many features. For example, it can support, it support the MySQL compatibility protocol directly. So if you use MySQL, and uh, you found that your business grow grows bigger and bigger, and the one MySQL cannot hold your data. And uh, you don't want to value sharding your MySQL, and you can try TidyB. And the TidyB now is a H type database, and we have already released a, a paper called uh, "It's Got It" in the where in the Lewis WireDB, and you can see the paper soon. And it's uh, it supports hybrid transactional and analytical processing, so you can run uh, both your OLTP and OLAP workload together in TidyB directly. Of course, because TidyB is a cloud native database, and uh, I think that it's a cloud neutral alternative for Amazon Aurora and Google Spanner. And I heard, uh, as far as I know, my, uh, know, some of our customer has used TidyB to migrate from Aurora and Spanner. So that's, here is the architecture of TidyB because. Uh, and you can see in the center part is we provide two story layers. One is type TV and which is a, a row format storage. And the other is type flash, which provides column format. And in the left part, in the left part is type DB and which is MySQL compatibility uh, server. And uh, you can use any MySQL driver to commute with type DB to maybe to uh, run your OLTP workload and it can also run some OLAP workload. And in the red part, and we build 
uh, a Spark driver or call type Spark. So you can run all your uh, OLAP workload in the type Spark in Spark and with TidyB. And as you can see, for a TidyB cluster, there are some maybe some component in the cluster, and so maintaining this component and uh, in the in production is not an easy thing. Of course, we meet many problems. And now, um, for example, here is just some, and I think some is a very interesting some problem. At the first is that uh, can it be trusted? Uh, in TidyB, we of course because we are database, we just want to save data into disk to keep uh, to keep data safe. But and we use FWrite, uh, yes, a common API to write data to the file. But in some places, we forgot to call Flash or FSync. Um, maybe you uh, you think that maybe mostly I think I say because when the TidyB process crashed, but the, the Linux sense can still guarantee that the data is safe because the Linux can help us flush the data from the page guide to the disk through PD flush. And maybe you will all, all of load this mechanism. So our data is safe, uh, of course, but it's really safe. We miss a bug. <laughs> we miss a Linux bug in, some, in the, our user production. And we found that when the Linux one, uh, want to help us to flash the page cache to the disk. And uh, you meet a bug, and you can, you can see it through the D message and uh, call it slab, unable to alloc memory. And when, we can meet, when the link meet this error, it, it just abandoned the page cache directly. So we lost our data. It's very horrible in production, but we meet this. And you can hear it. So from, now, from that, uh, uh, so from uh, at this time, I have not trust Linux anymore. And so every time I want to uh, save my data, I just I will use FSync or Flash to for speedily to save to the disk. And here's another prop uh, on call. And boy, we call the, uh, you can see that uh, one of our most important customer runs TidyB on the cloud. And uh, sometimes they call us that uh, the read latency increases, but the, cus but, uh, the customer workload didn't change. And uh, the only maybe abnormal metrics you can see is that just the uh, memory cache, the cache memory. Uh, um, we found that the cache memory dropped a lot at that time, but we had no idea why. Uh, finally, we identified the problem. and. Then you can see it's very interesting. And the, the, uh, the reason is that the cloud vendor ran a script on the host machine. And the script, the, the, in the script, it might uh, plug or unplug the NVMe device randomly. And so it will flash all the page cache to the disk possibility. And so we can see that the cache memory increased. And, but for TidyB, because there's now there's no data in the page cache. So the TidyB needs to read the data through disk again. So the latency increasing, increased. Uh, up to now, I still can't understand uh, why the cloud vendor created such a bug because- uh, how, did you before, find this, how, did you, how did you find out they ran a script? Did you ask them and they told you? Uh, uh, like how did you find this out that they ran a script on, on the host machine? Down uh, the uh, it's very interesting that we found this problem, and I uh, I run a PD state. Maybe I run some script in the background, uh, maybe regularly, and I found this problem. <laughs> and we found that oh, in, when uh, when the latency increase, we found uh, maybe a a global, a global uh, process, uh, maybe process progress, and so and we identify the progress is is maybe is uh, created by a script. So we found this problem, and then we talk. Wait, so 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 like you asked the cloud vendor, can you say no. who it? Can you say like, and they confirmed this, or you just assumed it's this? Yeah, the cloud vendor doesn't know this bug. Uh, didn't okay. know this bug uh, before, and uh, we've used a lot. We used uh, some way to find that uh, their uh, is their, their script can cause the problem, and they uh, they have know that oh, there's a bug in their script. <laughs> 
Okay, so you told them, and then like, oh yeah, you were right. We, we, there was a bug. Yes. Got it. Okay. Can you can you say who it was? Was it Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Alibaba? No, no, no. Not in the not not they. It's just a cloud vendor in China. <laughs> okay. 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 But, so not, you, but not Alibaba. Well, not, not Alibaba. Tencent. <laughs> Got it. Fair enough. So as you can see, some I still can't understand why they create such bug because before we found it, uh, the script runs you know, hundreds of machines before. Okay, and they there's just two um, examples, and uh, of course we meet before we meet many same problem before. Not only the two, above two, but also as you can see, and we we'll meet some uh, network package corrupt on some cloud vendors. Uh, no, and uh, we also, uh, because as you, we know that some cloud vendors support multi tenant, so sometimes we use the CPU was run out by another user's job on the same machine. And as you can see, and uh, some of our customers' machine was be, uh, was be hacked by the hacker, and so in the hacking script, and the tidy B was killed randomly. And you can see we meet many things. So. The conclusion is that error can happen anywhere, anytime. So building a distributed database is hard, but making sure it works as expected is even harder. So, uh, but we need to survive from the complex and distributed work from survive from it. Uh, in my opinion, the best as you can see, or maybe hard it the better defense is a good offense. So maybe here we need chaos engineering. Uh, so let's talk about the case engineering. So what's case engineering? And uh, through the web uh, wiki, we can see that case uh, engineering is a discipline of experiment and to help you to build confidence in the system. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, community to withstand turbulent condition in production. Here, um, I want to emphasize that it's just to uh, build confidence uh, I think that chaos engineering is a way that can help you to gain more confidence of your system in the distributed world. So, uh, here, okay. Of course, there is just a brief history of chaos engineering, and maybe it came from and then in two, 2010, came from Netflix. And at that, maybe you, you are all here, the chaos monkey at that time. And in the uh, maybe uh, in 2018, and the principle of case engineering become online. I recommend that maybe if you are interested in the case engineering, more of you should read about this uh, principle. Is so you can learn the case engineering more deeply. And of course, in the end of the 2019, the case mesh is open source by Pinka. And of course, we uh, the Pinka has also. Uh, contribute to the chaos engineering. We wrote a chapter called uh, "Chaos Engineering on a Database" uh, in the book "Chaos Engineering." Uh, it's my glad uh, pleasure that you can read this book after this meeting. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, I talk about chaos engineering is just a way that to help you gain more confidence. So, how to do the chaos engineering? And in my opinion, doing chaos is very easy. And if you want to do in chaos in practice, you just need four steps. And don't worry about it. I will use TidyB, for example, soon. And the first step is that the first is define the steady state and then make a hypothesis and introduce the variables and prove the hypothesis. And I will use TidyB here, for example. The steady state, what's the steady state? And in the chaos engineering, the steady state is that you can use to identify that your system works well in the normal condition, uh, which, uh, for example, here, we use QPTS metrics to identify that, oh, that our TIDB works well uh, normally. And then we make a hypothesis because TIDB use rough consensus algorithm to support for tolerance. So if we kill one TIDB instance, and the, if the instance is, uh, just uh, rough the leader, and uh, uh, if we kill the leader, the QPS may be draw because the client cannot write data into the uh, rough the leader now. But 
uh, other replica because using rough algorithm, we are elect a new leader soon to serve to serve the client right again. Uh, so we we are found that the QPS will be recovered. And here is the hypothesis because and so we will do the uh, experiment and we'll introduce the variable uh, real time real world variable into it. And uh, the variable we want to do is just kill one TDB instance randomly. And then we want to disprove the, our hypothesis is right, um, it's okay or not. So here we just in, uh, run the experiment and kill the TDB and we found that, that the TDB dropped. The QPS dropped, but not recovered anymore. We found that there's a bug in our system and we will, fix, uh, we will try to look, locate the problem and uh, fix the bug and then do the kills uh, experiment again. As you can see, there is just four steps and very easy. But now we know how to do a kills experiment now. But where to start? I think that uh, uh, maybe here we need a kills platform. For kills platform, I think it, had, should, it should have the following feature. At the first, it must uh, be support doing chaos engineering, uh, doing chaos experiment automa automatically. And I, no one want to do the chaos uh, experiment one by one manually, and it's a uh, tough work. And the platform must provide lots of different real, real world variables, and so you can maybe to simulate uh, the, as much as the real, uh, uh, problem in the world. And of course, the most important thing is that the system and the test must don't know anything about chaos experience. So, and so, of course, where is the chaos platform? And as you can see, here is chaos mesh. Uh, here's just a, a background of chaos mesh. Uh, when we begin to begin to uh, develop TDB, maybe five years ago, we have also had already begin to develop uh, uh, develop an internal project. Uh, uh, we call Scotina. It's another chaos engineering platform, and but as the platform grows, maybe uh, be better and better, we found that not only PinCap but also our customers or communities will both need this chaos engineering platform. So we decided to start a new project. So we call the chaos mesh here. Maybe, so we start a project uh, maybe, at, maybe at April 2019 and uh, op yeah, open source it at, in the end of 2019. Did you guys, consider chaos monkey at all or, or you just like why not use chaos monkey because that's been around you know since for 10 you know for nine years since you started like was there something about oh. chaos monkey that was insufficient for database testing that and that's why you had to build chaos mesh uh we don't uh, try the chaos monkey before because at that time uh, as you can see tidb is a complex distributed uh, system and uh, we want to uh, maybe you can we want to customize our chaos with it. So we decided to uh, build by ourselves. So we have a lot, uh, try Chaos Monkey or try any other tool. But inspired by Chaos Monkey, we found out how to do it to guide us how to do the chaos engineering. Right, no, right, but like my, from what I remember from Chaos Monkey was, they were just killing random servers in their data center and see how the, the overall system would, would recover. My question is, is there something specific about a distributed database system like TiDB that merited building something from scratch? Okay, and uh, Andy, I will ask, uh, uh, answer your question. Why we don't need a chaos monkey? And uh, at that time, because the chaos had only maybe Oh, I will also I will uh, compare the chaos measure to the chaos mon monkey soon. So maybe you can know why. Because in my, uh, in our because we want to con customer our for failure injection with chaos engineering and do more both of other things. Okay, I will go for it. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is just a background of chaos mesh, and so I 
Here I just want to tell you why we why do you need Chaos Mesh if you want to use Chaos Engineering. And uh, here are some, in my opinion, there are that, uh, for the Chaos Mesh, and there are some uh, maybe following advantages. And uh, the first is built based on the Kubernetes, and uh, it can provide lots of real world variable simulation, and it's easy to use, and can also uh, provide a, a, a dashboard so you can observe your system and it has a booming community. And I will don't explain them one by one soon. And of course, in my opinion, maybe the most important thing, uh, reason that why you need a case map is that it can really help you find bugs. <laughs> of course, I will show some bugs, with many bugs found by case mesh soon too. And the first is based on Kubernetes, because we want to test a cloud native database. So uh, what the thing should be run on the cloud, and uh, of course, if now we know that the Kubernetes is the maybe operating system on the cloud. So what the thing should be run on the cloud? And uh, for the Chaos Mesh, it use some uh, maybe use a, also uh, the Chaos Mesh run on the Kubernetes and it use some hacky way. It run as a demo set and it can use run as a set car into on the Kubernetes directly. So using this the, this two way. Uh, the your application or your system uh, doesn't know anything about Chaos Mesh. Uh, another uh, reason is that Chaos Mesh can provide lots of uh, real world variables, and you can see that Chaos Mesh can help you to um, kill the process randomly, and can help to delay the less work, or just help you to let the right or read uh, uh, data field. And, and, and uh, we, the Chaos Mesh can even help you to inject failure into the Linux kernel directly. And here's a big, a big picture that why you should choose Chaos Mesh compared to other Chaos Engineering platform. And you can see that the Chaos Mesh may be nearly provided most of the uh, ways to help you to ingest failure. And uh, of course, compared to Chaos Monkey, and you can see that Chaos Monkey just provides a little thing. So we don't want to use it <laughs> at that time. And we want, we just begin to develop our Chaos, uh, de develop our Chaos engineering platform. And hey, Chaos Mesh is, uh, is very easy to use because it's based on the Kubernetes. And so you can deploy it directly on the Kubernetes cluster. No, and you don't need to require no other special dependencies. And uh, and of course, you do, your system and the test doesn't need, doesn't need to know anything about case mesh, and uh, you, you don't need to modi uh, modify your deployment logic of your system. And if you want to do a case experiment, you can just maybe provide a YAM config file. Uh, maybe. And if you don't want to uh, edit the file, you can also even use dashboard to run the case experiment. And of course, the, the case mesh also provides a dashboard to help you to manage and monitor all the case experiment. And we can see that observability. And uh, in the case mesh, we provide uh, a dashboard. So as you can see like this, and in the dashboard, you can see the case experiment directly. Uh, for example, here, we provide, uh, we run three uh, case experiments. The first two is just port term, uh, short term port failure. And you can see that the QPS recovers soon after the experiment, uh, experiment finish. But for the third experiment, uh, we found that the, the long term port failure, we found that the QPS uh, had not been recovered for a long time. So we found that there's a bug of TIDB. And so as you can see, using this, the dashboard is very straightforward to let you know whether your system goes well or not. And of course, for the booming community, and you can see that the star on the GitHub in three months increased a lot. And we also have now have maybe 37 contributors, not from not only from Pink Hat, but also from Red Hat, Animotion, and Media, et cetera. And of course, and we have many adoption now, not only Pink Hat use it, and many other guys, uh, 
many, many other companies use Kiosk Mesh to uh, build the, to test their own business like this. Uh, of course, uh, Kiosk Mesh has uh, the above advantage features, maybe, uh, of course, and Kiosk Mesh can help you, really can help you to find bugs. And here's just uh, maybe bug list found by Kiosk Mesh. And most, uh, as you can see, some of the bugs are very serious and but lucky. We found them uh, before we released the version. Okay, so, and uh, now I just talk about why do we need, why do you need Kiosk Mesh if you want to use Kiosk Engineering. So maybe I think that now we can start a Kiosk experiment with Kiosk Mesh now. But when we, uh, when you before, when you want to do the Kiosk engineer, uh, experiment, before doing it, you should uh, load the following things and uh, notice that the first thing is that if you are a new buy for Kiosk engineering, uh, don't do the Kiosk uh, experiment in the, uh, in the production environment directly at first. Um, because you, if you are, because you are a new buy and uh, you can't know whether your system is strong enough to survive from the chaos experiment. So you need to do the experiment in the test environment at first. And the, the other thing is that you, if you want to do the experiment in production, you need to control the blast radius in production and just increase the radius gradually. Uh, for the radius, it's just like, uh, for example, if you want, uh, maybe you can ingest failure to some specific person in your system and maybe then you can increase the radius and maybe to ingest failure into some maybe person in, in, in one street and then increase it and to in the city. But if you just maybe, but if you just increase the uh, failure to what person or to the system maybe and make your system crash. And maybe I guess uh, I, I will that maybe the tomorrow your boss will let you go. And uh, the third that uh, I think is the most important one you should know is that uh, doing chaos experiment is not just in just failure randomly and ablings. Uh, because time is limited and we must do the most valuable things. So uh, when we do the chaos experiment, we should ask a question is that uh, what are the best valuable experiment must I do? to gain more confidence in the so system. In your list that you had on the previous slide of like, here's all the bugs you found in TDB. Were these things you found, like when you when you first run it in Chaos Mesh, were, were these things you found in the first one minute or two minutes, or, or did it take several days for those bugs to manifest themselves? Uh, some, uh, uh, as far as I know, some uh, maybe but be some bug, can be found in just one or two minutes, maybe soon. For example, I mentioned that maybe we meet some network uh, corrupt bug before. And so using Kiosk Mesh, we just we corrupt a network package and we found many bugs. <laughs> it's okay. very quick. But sometimes when you, for example, when you working, uh, some bugs must be found maybe in a long time, maybe one or two days. For example, sometimes uh, because, uh, TiDB use RocksDB to flush data, uh, to save data. And, uh, and uh, testing te RocksDB is not an easy thing because uh, uh, RocksDB is a robot, maybe has, I, I think RocksDB is a robot and uh, it's very strong and uh, it's stable from now on. So, but uh, RocksDB still has some bugs. And so finding these bugs uh, using Chaos Measure can take a long time. Uh, I remember that we we uh, maybe we located a serious Roxy bug. Uh, the bug exists maybe about in the Roxy exists about more than three years, and we run the kill smash maybe um, about one week and just found this bug. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, okay, I will continue, <laughs> and of course. Um, when you do want to do the chaos experiment with chaos mesh, you must uh, get, make sure that your application has already been run on the Kubernetes because chaos mesh can only work on the Kubernetes. So, uh, 
let's begin. Uh, using QSMAP is very easy. If you have if you have Kubernetes cluster, or you can use just one script, uh, one step to install QSMAP. And of course, if you want to try in your local machine, and you can use install QSMAP with time like this. Uh, Here's just a simple example of a case match. Uh, we just need to provide a config file to tell case match how to do the case experiment. Uh, in the config file, you can see that uh, we need to you need to define the action. Maybe here is the pod kill, and which means that we will kill the, our pod random uh, kill the pod, and the mode is just randomly select one code one pod, and of course we want to we will use the selector to control to control the blast radius. And of course, we here the scheduler is a, is a how to do the uh, chaos experiment. And we can, so through the config file, we can see that the, we will randomly select the type QV instant and kill it every five minutes. And after we edit the config file, and we can use the cube count apply to do the chaos experiment. And we can also use cube control delete to stop the chaos experiment. And through the dashboard, we can see the output of the chaos of this experiment. And you can see that the QPS drop every five minutes and meet our expectation like this. And if, of course, here, the, this is a way just you use, maybe you use a config file. And I think that maybe I, uh, I'm a lazy person, and so I just so I sometimes I don't want to use the common way. So here we the case mesh just also already provided a dashboard way, and through the dashboard you can see that we can configure the, and we can configure the experiment and uh, easily, and so and you can just as the examples shows, like this. Okay, that's all for the uh, how we do the experiment. And of course, we are, in the end, I will talk about thing about the future plan of QSMASH. And for the um, QSMASH now has been widely used in in China, especially in China. But we still need many things to do at first. We need to improve our dashboard, and because now the dashboard can only work TDB and some specific uh, specific uh, distributed application, uh, we want to in integrate more, and uh, want to the user can integrate uh, their own business into the dashboard directly, and uh, we, another thing is that we want to do the kills on the AWS or GCP directly, which means that uh, we want to maybe. If you want, we want to use chaos map to maybe to shut down your home region of another of uh, of your business like this, and of course another thing is that because uh, now uh, one of the chaos experiments are defined by ourselves, and we want to integrate with Adama with machine learning or AI, so to let AI to to help us to do more, maybe to help to to help us uh, to define the chaos e experiment. And of course, another thing is that we will uh, integrate with CICD system and uh, such as Argo and Jerkins, so, which means that you can run the chaos match with Argo. And then after the chaos match, the equal experiment finish, and you can publish, maybe you re release your version and, uh, through, and publish it through Argo or Jerkins, like, Jerkins like this. And if you want to learn more about the Kill Smash, and you can visit our website and or GitHub or Twitter like this. Okay, uh, thank you very much. And that's all for today's uh, talk. And in the end, okay, uh, awesome. All right, so I, will, I will applaud uh, on behalf of everyone else. Um, I think Lynn, you have a question. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Lynn, you should be able to, you should be allowed to unmute yourself. There you go. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, thanks, Andy, uh, and uh, thanks, uh, Leo. It's it's uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, talk. Uh, oh, by the way, I, I'm uh, my name is Ling. I'm a PhD student here, uh, working with Andy on databases. 
Um, so uh, one question I want to ask, I'm very curious, is that how actually do people at TIDB come up with um, what would be the set of chaos experiments to run, right, to test various aspects of TIDB, right? it, it, especially given that there are like many like a, a failure options supported in your uh, chaos mesh, and there are also uh, various combinations of um, possible failures, right? Uh, that's basically, I'm just curious. Okay, and it's a good question. And uh, you, uh, thanks, Ni. And uh, you just told me you just want to uh, maybe uh, uh, the question is that you just want to know how typing cap to combine so many uh, maybe failure, uh, maybe uh, combination of failures to test TIDB, right? How we do the combination, right? Right, right, exactly. Especially, I think in the talk, you also said that you don't want to just um, blast okay. everything, right? You want to have uh, some sort of like uh, focus, right? So I just okay. wonder how you do that, yeah. Uh, 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 in pink cap, at first, because and you can say that the tidy beam maybe have different layers, and uh, so at first maybe we will do uh, we mostly we will do the case measure in some in some scope. At a, maybe we just here we just, uh, mostly we will do the chaos mesh with chaos engineering against uh, maybe with the file with I O or network. Uh, because we found uh, and because we found that uh, because uh, for Thai TV and uh, because we found that most uh, we some our maybe most of our uncore issues are caused by the network and the uh, file system, so we mostly we do this thing. Another thing is uh, a lot um, um, a lot uh, most a lot of experiment we did. Um, we have done most is just use uh, just random kill the pod or just random delay the pod because and uh, as you can see uh, maybe we most mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, briefly we mainly focus on the I/O. I see. Uh, I see. And then uh, we will did uh, something as just with others uh, for the network and then we also did that uh, then for the uh process progress injection and we did really did we own we really inject failure into the medical color but uh, only if we found we really meet some uh, interesting bugs and we will try to maybe to inject why the color can meet the can have can have this bug right right I, I see i see yeah thanks for sharing yeah thanks okay all right i have a question from from, from van you want to unmute yourself Oh yeah, sure. Hi, um, I'm Van. You can call me Jen Chow. I'm working with Andy uh, for the testing infrastructure. I'm an MSc student in CMU, and I'm particularly interested why about the decision uh, for why you only um, focus on the Kubernetes instead of like on the bare metal or on the VM, like the the uh, Chaos Monkey does for the for the uh, Chaos Mesh, because oh. it occurs to me, but it, it occurs to me that um the the runtime um you are working on uh is on the container layer it's like additional layer from the container to the to the to the host so in terms of the i o it will occur additional layer which introduce additional possibility of bugs that will only be more troublesome sounds to me so i'm not quite sure why um uh, what's the concern from from the king pink cap Okay, so uh, thanks. And your question is that uh, why we just support the Kubernetes and not support the VM? Yeah, or, yeah. Okay, and we because we believe that uh, in the near future, everyone uh, we are uh, maybe uh, TiddyB is a cloud native database, and we think we believe that in the near future, what the business, what the application maybe should um, should be run on the cloud, and and uh, and, uh, and on the cloud. And uh, maybe we think that uh, Kubernetes is just uh, maybe the operating system on the cloud. So we think that maybe supporting the Kubernetes is uh, maybe is the future. So I see. I see. Uh, yes. Thanks. Actually, you, thanks. What what percentage of your customers, if you know, run TiDB via Kubernetes? Uh, um, I, is it like you know, like it's seventy five percent, like a like a large percentage, or is it still pretty rare? Pretty well. Oh, is it, I, is it like, 
is it is it very common that people run TiddyB with Kubernetes, or do you have a small number of customers using Kubernetes? Um, um, maybe one year before, just small, but uh, from now on. But this year, many customers in China, especially in China, uh, want to uh, tell us they want to migrate. Uh, what are saying? What they are maybe infrastructure to Kubernetes, and uh, they want to run TiddyB on uh, Kubernetes. And uh, in outside, of course, outside of China, maybe in America, or uh, I I think that one of our customer, maybe most of our customer, run the TiddyB on Kubernetes. Okay. All right. I have a question from from Don. Hi. Uh, hi. This is Don. Uh, I'm a incoming faculty member to Penn State University. So uh, it's very nice talk. So. This whole thing reminds me about uh, Jepson. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a very popular distributed database, kind of like testing framework that also I, I, allows. I think, I think TiDB is Jepson certified. Yes. Yeah, yeah I saw that before. Yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm just kind of like wondering because, like, we we are like very lucky in this in this situation, like in this in this slice. Um, yeah, Jepson also allows like uh, like people actually injecting like different kind of faults. I don't know if it is like this broad of kind of faults. Uh, uh, so I want like first I want uh, somehow hear your comments on like uh, how like uh, Chaos Mesh is somehow related to or orthogonal to to to, to Jepson. And another one I want to ask is pretty much uh, so right now uh, uh, Chaos Mesh is uh, supporting Kubernetes, which is uh, all of the different kind of services are kind of bounded in a container boundary. So uh, uh, have you ever think about like extending this, extending this boundary, like uh, making it more general, for example, like uh, there are multiple different kind of like parts are connecting with each other within a general like process. Can you actually inject uh, these kind of like problems or CPU burn and memory burn, whatever to uh, in, a, in a sense of like process, not really a container. Oh, uh, the first question is that uh, maybe to talk about something with chaos match related to the Jepson, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, and you told you also speak talk before that we uh, TidyB has also passed maybe passed Jepson test, and we have worked we we have worked with the Jepson also trial for a long time to let Jepson to meet uh, to uh, to let TidyB. To uh, to pass Jepson test, and in my opinion, uh, Jepson is just uh, one way to test a database. And uh, you can say, hey, uh, hey, the Jepson will, for example, with TiDB, the Jepson will, will start a TiDB cluster, and uh, also to do some failure. The but the most important thing is that the so Jepson is, uh, uh, I think that is a mechanism to maybe is a way to. Uh, check the minimizability or for just to check with or to check the whether your relation the Jepson can work well with your smash and in of course in pin tab our in our internal uh, experiment we have already uh, embedded Jep uh, integrated Jepson with Chaos Mesh, so which means that we still use uh, the failure. We, we still use Chaos Mesh for failure injection, but we use Jepson. We use Jepson's uh, uh, verif verification and uh, to use Jepson to run TiDB and to check the you know, whether TiDB meets the vulnerability or still TiDB meets the sample isolation. So just, it's just, just, to, just to interject, that like, yes. So Jepson introduces the same low-level like syscall or like hardware failures but it has the, the rules above it to determine whether you're violating transactional consistency guarantees. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So you can think that we can work well with Jepson. And uh, we also prove, uh, oh, by the way, we have also um, uh, port Jepson from Cloudjar to Go. And we have written a Go uh, Jepson. <laughs> and oh, really? Maybe, yes. Oh. Because, because, for the, because, as you can, we, doesn't, we don't like, uh, GVM or don't want to write Cloudjar. It's uh, maybe a hard language to write. Absolutely, so, good. fantastic. Yes. <laughs> we call the whole thing from the, from the Cloudjar to go, and we call the type pocket T I P O C K E T. The project in in Pinta, and you can also see it. 
And oh, 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 sorry. Where? What's the second uh, question? Oh yeah, the second one was pretty much I said like right now the platform support is Kubernetes. So like I would guess that most of the the the, the fault injections are injected into like in a unit of like containers. I'm just curious that if this thing can be more generalized into uh, like a more common uh, application with easier boundaries into kind of like if, for example, I can inject all this kind of stuff in a general process rather than like it's like bounded by a particular Kubernetes. So for example, you can cut, cut it off and see like inject different kind of syscalls into it. You can also try to kind of like, like uh, try to like wrap around uh, like a, a particular process like a socket and just listen, try to like drop packages and create time scale and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, yes. Uh, the question is that maybe now you uh, you worry that the case manager can only maybe inject fire to the containers, but uh, we should uh, increase the scope, the finish, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I think I think like yeah, I, I definitely see the reason why Kubernetes is like very appealing, but I think like it's also there's a chance that you probably want to kind of make it more general. Yeah. Like to make yes. any kind of distributed applications benefit from it. Uh, got it. And uh, in the cap and you can through this feature and uh, the cap the cap smash and you two ways to help you to help you to ingest system. One way is here the cap demo a demon. And uh, you can see that maybe the Kios daemon is just like maybe a daemon uh, program running at the daemon side of Linux directly. So using this way can help you to ingest failure, not only to the container, but also to other programs that uh, uh, running on the Kubernetes, uh, uh, maybe in Linux. And the other is the Kios uh, sidecar. Maybe you can see that it starts in another container may be running in the same uh, run in the same pod in the same pod of your application and the, the set car can help you uh, maybe it can uh, do the failure injection maybe like to inject failure to a socket or to the binding socket like you said before like this so uh, in my opinion the chaos and in uh, chaos match that lo uh, not only can support to inject the container directly it can also maybe do the do other things like you said before, and of course, uh, there's a tricky way that also we find that KMS can must should only be run on Kubernetes. Uh, the the uh, the failure the uh, failure injection way can still be used on the local machine or on premise uh, on the maybe mental machine directly. So you can still use KMS the failure injection way. Of chaos mesh, uh, not only on Kubernetes, but also maybe on maybe on the local motion. Okay, thanks. All right, uh, we have another question from Dominic. Hi, yeah, thank you. I'm Dominic. Uh, I'm principal engineer at Cisco Systems, and I have a question for uh, Sidon Tang. I hope I pronounce the name correctly. I saw on your uh, Twitter profile that you also use TLA plus temporal logic of actions. And uh, I wonder what is your opinion? Uh, how do chaos engineering and formal specification, how do they relate? Do they complement each other or are they uh, completely unrelated? Uh, you talk about the formal uh, verification? Yes, TLA plus temporal logic uh, of actions. And yeah. how do they? How do they yes, uh, yeah. relate? Okay, okay. Your question is uh, how to compare with the with the uh, TLA plus or like some or other yeah. formalization. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, my, in, in my opinion, there are different things. Um, uh, smash, uh, but using TLA plus is as one is a way that to verify that your algorithm is right or wrong. For example, we use a PLA plus to verify that our uh, transaction uh, algorithm is, uh, can work well. Uh, but um, after you use PLA plus to maybe to prove that your M is correct, you still can not guarantee that it can work well in the real world. So here, we, because you may, you may introduce some bugs, 
or may you may uh, anyway and uh, so here we use need to use chaos mesh or other ways to verify that uh, your implementation can work well in the real world. Uh, in my opinion that's that PA plus is just a way to verify uh, the algorithm before you be, uh, before you really write write the code and uh, a kill smash is a way to verify <laughs> to <coughs> prove that your code is right uh, after like this. It's okay. So you're you're saying that the form of verification is to verify the specification and chaos mesh is to verify the implementation. Yeah, maybe. Cool. Thank you. Good pleasure. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any other remaining questions? So I guess um, the, the memory burn test, what is that? Like that's flipped bits or what, what does that actually do? Uh, sorry. <coughs> the memory burn, like CPU burn is when like you, you, the CPU oh. just starts computing garbage and the memory burn is, is what? Like you start getting flipped bits? It, the memory burn is simple. It just maybe you can start a, a, a just a, maybe start a application and uh, eat most of the memory. <laughs> so you, you, you just start flip, you just start flipping bits. What? Like, so, what does it actually do? If it, it it flips the values in bits, or it it, it uh, tells you I don't have any more memory. Uh, maybe to maybe to simulate a OM problem. So Got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, have you have you have you tried doing the the bit flip thing where like you just you you have enough you spawn a thread, and then you start randomly flipping bits in the address space it's just just to see how it, it, it behaves. I know that the uh, DuckDB guys have have tried that, and I've heard that in other commercial systems. Uh, uh for the thread scheduling. No, it'd be like um. I guess chaos mesh can't do this. Like you have, like you know, you you malloc a bunch of space for your, for the database system in memory, and yeah. then you you just have another thread randomly writes randomly flip bits in memory just to see what breaks, and how and, and how like fault tolerant you are. Have you tried that one? Oh, okay. Oh, I got yeah. you think that we. Oh, oh yes. I love. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, you think that maybe so because for a memory uh, database and but a lot of uh, maybe the chaos mesh want to to flip the memory bit like yes. this so yes. to maybe okay and um uh, okay oh for this we can use a curl chaos and uh, the as you can see we can oh like this here is oh, you can do anything Yes, we, we yeah. can help you to inject failure into the memory directly. <laughs> Got it, okay. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, guys. Um, so again, thank you, uh, Shadon, for, for being here. Uh, we appreciate you staying up. I realize, again, it's 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, either you're going to go to bed or the day just getting started. We appreciate you, you, know, you getting up this early and spending time with us.